As well as police officers, the vehicle squad employs ex-garage mechanics who know everything there is to know about cars. Their job is to find any vehicles in the yard that might be stolen, when the only remaining clue is the body shell. Paul Booth has worked for the squad for three years. He can spot a stolen car in minutes. Yeah, uh, the first one we've looked at, which is a Renault, uh, it's a complete uh, stolen car. So that's a good start. How could you tell it was stolen? Uh, we found the chassis number on it and the engine number on it. Everything matches up with the... Uh, Registration and the registration is shown as outstanding stones. It's the third one. Right. You want to pass that handy to uh, exhibits officer? Yeah. Let's just start. Right. right. These are all registration plates and uh, VIN tags they've taken off vehicles. If you get a stolen vehicle, you want to change its identity. The best way of doing it is get a tag and a set of number plates, and then you, you've got the, the full identity of the vehicle. You get people coming up saying they've got a, a kit for a metro. Find a metro, a gold metro, whatever colour they want. You've got a set of number plates, and there should be some VIN tags there, yeah? And the VIN tags to go with them. Yeah? That's a ringing kit. So they've got the chassis number and all the identification they need to ring a stolen vehicle. All neatly, yeah. Uh, Kept. And they that... probably sell that for 100 quid or 200 quid, depending on how important it is, whether it's a turbo, a metro, or a GT, or something like that. This shows you how easy it is to ring a metro. This is sometimes called a slam tile or the bonnet locking platform. You've got the VIN plate there, which is the vehicle identification number plate, you know. Uh, it's a simple case of removing two bolts. You take this panel out, replace it with the, the salvage item, in this case, this piece, uh, and you've changed the identity of the car. It's as simple as that. So easy. And that, of course, that plate then, because you've changed the whole panel, won't show any signs of interference. One five what? The squad is finding more and more cars reported again. stolen on the police national computer. Stolen. stolen in 94. Mm. February 94. Brilliant. Exact match. Right, that's thanks, Chuck. Another one. Bites the dust. So that's a 94 stolen. It's a 94 so stolen, February. yeah. That's <clears throat> That's also stolen, that Fiesta. Well, that's a good success rate in Sophia yeah, vehicles. Doing, we're doing quite, pretty well. Although they found several stolen vehicles and ringing kits in the yard, the squad couldn't prove that the owners were involved in stealing cars. The men claimed that they bought dozens of vehicles a day and had no way of checking every car's history. We've got so much work, you get sort of bogged down with it, you, you're getting under pressure with it, you, you've got deadlines to meet, people are bailed to come back on certain dates. You, you've got to meet these targets and deadlines and they're getting tighter and tighter because they're getting more and more vehicles now. We could do with double the staff. Over a hundred cars are stolen in Greater Manchester each day. The squad of 18 are up against increasingly violent criminals involved in drugs, fraud and armed robbery. In Stockport, Two Department of Transport inspectors were shot dead as they investigated the theft of MOT certificates. Manchester's the car crime capital of Britain. Every month, the squad opens the doors of its vehicle surgery, where owners have to bring their cars in for examination. Only certain vehicles are pulled in, usually because they have a suspicious history. This Ford Fiesta was once a total write-off. School teacher Alan Rain bought the car after it had been repaired and put back on the road. It cost him four and a half thousand. Is there any damage that's occurred to it whilst you've had it? The Scratches only scratches or anything like that? No. no um, the only thing we've had done to it again is fixing this door here. It's actually cracked again, so that's why it's got the sealant through it. And you've had the vehicle watch stickers put on? We had the vehicle watch stickers put on, and I've had the immobiliser put on. Um, and that's all I've done to it. 
Right, we'll give it a good going over and... Uh... Boss Mike Lima. The examiners have a number of ways of checking a car's identity. Alan Rain has to wait outside as the team begin to strip search his car, looking for clues to the year it was made. It's May 91. It's one month a day, that one. It's all right again. It's all right. It doesn't look right, no. The details of the car tell us it was that this vehicle was registered in 1991, yet the body shell is from a 1990. And Ford don't leave body shells lying around for 12 months. So obviously, it, it would seem that the engine in this vehicle doesn't belong to the body to start with. Somebody's got hold of a, another body shell for it, by whatever means, and have put the engine from that 1991 car into it. Uh, so the engine number's genuine from the 1991 car, but they've put it into a 1990 body, and they've obviously got the logbook for the 91 car, which is why it still shows a J plate. Have a look at that sticker, Paul. The hunt for the car's true identity is on. Paul Walker's discovered that at some time the windscreen was etched. Something the numbers there. on the glass should be the same as the registration oh, plate, but on this car, they've been rubbed off. Been etched that. You want them scrapers? Let's get in here, Manicure. The chassis number stamped on the floor under the driver's seat also looks suspicious. Yeah, it's coming slower. This needs a lot of work. If you, uh... It's coming up at the end here. I don't know. It's, his tops are coming now. I mean, there was nothing there, but it's, it's coming back. Yeah, here we are. Underneath? Is it a letter, is it letterbox? It's got a little channel out. You're going to have to take this down. Try and, can you not try and peel it up a bit closer, you know, like from the seam at this edge, rather than starting right at the back? Oh, now look at it underneath. Where it meets the sill. <clears throat> Probably a kid. Yeah. Stop trying to butcher some buggers, can I? Right at the very end. It's like a fine. Do you think a number's been stamped over a number or something? No, the, the original number has been cut out. You can see uh, a little slot where it's been cut out. And then this this plate with this, this number on it has then been welded over the top just to cover it up. So in, in effect, it's, it's two skins here. It's just a slot where the original number was. If we didn't think there was anything there, it's not worth ripping the floor up and ruining the car for the guy who's bought it and thinks it's his. You can see it. What I'll do is just, without, without damaging the edges, just pull it away a bit. The owner continues to wait, unaware the floor of his Ford Fiesta is being peeled open. Just heal off the, the sill, maybe. Don't go through too far and cut below. You can nip it and nip it with it, but don't cut the floor underneath. It's a lot easier to explain the damage when you're a bobby. <laughs> if the examiners can read at least some of the original chassis number, they'll have the evidence they need. You might be able to see now through there what, what they've done to the original chassis number. It's a little butchers. You can see them too. Yeah. But it looks like the last number, doesn't it? The finish is 3-2, doesn't it? I think we might have got it. That's the news. Right, basically. Uh, I'll show you what we've, we've found. Uh, when, you, when we knew it was a... A damaged you obviously, vehicle. You obviously knew something before, can't you? Well, we've been informed by DVLA yeah. that the vehicle has, has been a, a write-off. Yeah. And obviously it's been put, put back on the road. Yeah. We believe this vehicle to be a stolen vehicle, the right. shell. The engine is as it purports to be, yeah. relates to these registration plates. Right. Uh, as that, as a matter of fact, then we must tell you you can't sell it, you can't alter it, you can't get rid of it, you can't dispose of the vehicle. If you do, know it, knowing it to be stolen, well, you get rid of it, you then, become, <laughs> you, well, you, you then become li Obviously, liable. Yeah. The insurance report said it required a new, a new body shell. Right. This isn't a new body shell, we knew that from looking at it. Yeah. All right. So we've dug a bit deeper mm -hmm. and we found out that uh, there's, a, there's been a plate <laughs> welded 
if you can see that, yeah. you can see that, that the yeah. original plate, uh, the, the, the written off vehicle, mm. has been taken out and, and, and plated into here. Right. That, that's your original floor there. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Got numbers from there and numbers from the glass right. front screen. Right. Um, and we want someone to come and have a look at it, basically. We'll let, we'll let you take it home. Right, that's good. Right. Okay, you won't <laughs> be getting the kids, basically. You won't be getting the bus. Put it that way. Right. I'd, I'd ask you as well, because we have got the receipt from where you got the vehicle from, mm -hmm. is not to ring them. No. Not to call Alan Rain has discovered that all he owns of his XR2 is the engine. The rest of it still belongs to the insurers of the original owner. He may have to pay twice for his car before he can own it. Nicknamed the mortuary, the squad's vehicle pound is packed with the corpses of stolen cars they've recovered. In Manchester it was a garage and the vehicles were just being systematically stripped. They weren't being run, stripped for all the parts and they're all being racked into shelves and people with late model fiestas would go there, maybe had a small bump in the car, they wanted a, a front wing, front offside wing in red. You could go to a shelf and pick off a front offside wing in red. I mean, not the problem of having it sprayed or... If you wanted a suspension unit, for later model suspension units in that department. So the, the vehicles were being stolen, systematically stripped and then shelved and the parts were being sold off. There was over 30 vehicles and we could probably identify 24 of those. Until we started to piece them together, it was just unbelievable. 18 complete cars. And one of them, which was the brand new one, about six weeks prior to it in there being stripped, it was on the production line at Ford being built. And it, it, it had only done 400 miles. And six weeks later from being on the production line, it's in this garage and it's uh, in pieces. It's unbelievable. Seven thirty a.m. Detective Sergeant Mike Turner briefs the team morning, for another raid. The operation this morning concerns two premises side by side uh, in a rather exposed location, but we've received very good intelligence that inside one of these units we are going to find six, seven commercial vehicles, all of which are stolen are in the process of being cut up. So the plan this morning is to arrest any persons on the premises and we're looking to possibly do a full scenes of crime search on the vehicles that we recover. Hang on a minute, will everybody follow John? He's got a big tranny van. You've still got that delicious plum with yeah. 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 you. This one here. 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 The squad find a garage filled with the remains of Ford Transits and small vans. Some are practically brand new. It's going to be difficult to work out which pieces belong to which vehicle. Austin, are we Austin kid? It's a uh, waste. What? How does it come under? It's Freight Rover. Freight Rover. Freight Rover. Freight Rover. Da. Well, it's going, da as well. it's going under Freight Rover. Colour white, description, cut up remains. We've got the front end and the floor there, the front driver's side and the passenger side in the back of that. Look it up. You're marvellous, you kid, marvellous. The men taken away for questioning aren't involved in stealing or cutting up the vehicles. It appears that they've been forced to let members of a violent gang use their equipment. on the front seat of the car with a, a, what looks like a revolver in a holster. Yeah. Bring it out, I'll, I'll take it somewhere safe and check it. Yeah. No. 
I think that's uh, I think that's going to be a tie. But. The gun turns out to be an air pistol. No plates on the front, uh, Jock, no. Mileage? Mileage is uh, 87, 871. That wasn't a stutter, that was 87871. Ignition lock damaged. Screwed? Yeah, I think it could have been stolen, this one, kid. Does it look a bit suspicious, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> All them copies of the Manchester Evening News in the back. The results show that we've recovered the remains of eight stolen vehicles looking like about £60,000 worth of vehicles that have been stolen and, uh, and chopped up. It's, it's pure cannibalism. This is obviously uh, stolen to order. Somebody wants an engine out of it, uh, so they've completely destroyed a brand new vehicle to, ju just to acquire the engine. This is the accumulative effort of a hard core of criminals uh, operating throughout the country. Every city's got them, every town's got them. And of course, added together, when you, when you consider the finance involved, the insurance involved. It's no wonder that you and I are paying premiums way, way over the odds for the activity of this kind of uh, thing. In a city where a hundred cars are stolen every day, car thieves have become expert con men. Well, I was approached by a car valeting company who offered to do a free car valet on the basis that they would get the con uh, continuous business from me. The appointment was arranged. I showed them round the car and left them with it. Within a short space of time, I realised the car had gone. I asked my secretary if she could explain what happened. And she said, well, I understood that he was doing a valet and you, you know, realised it would go. At 20 to 3, the car valet was on the phone saying that the car had been in an accident and they would be turning up at the office tomorrow admitting full liability. Two days later, um, the car still hadn't materialised and my secretary came in to say that she recognised the voice on the phone as the actual car valet. He said his name was a Tony Wright. And effectively, he, he, I mean, he came on the phone and... He was very nonchalant and cocky and said, sorry about the car, sniggered, and said that he would do me a great favour and offer my car back for sale for £2,000. It's been stolen to order and the person's not happy with the order. I told him I wasn't interested. Later that day, I was in the city centre and my mobile phone went again and it was the same chap on the phone, Tony again, saying that £2,000 wasn't a lot to pay, bearing in mind things could turn nasty if wanted to. The car was recovered with paint stripper on the bonnet and wing, and passenger door panel badly beaten, a nail mark up the side, five, six thousand miles more on the car. It wasn't my car anymore. My car was my pride and joy. The £25,000 BMW was recovered by the stolen vehicle squad. They're on the trail of car thieves who steal luxury vehicles by duping their owners. This garage coming up on the right is the one that the AP for the BMW was told to drive behind. All right, is that the one when he was... Uh, Dave McAdam and Martin yeah, Waitman uh, are running the investigation. Yeah, the Suzuki and was threatened in payment of £2,000. He'd get his car back. He'd get his BM back. Right. We'll make our way up to see Frank. Yeah. Um, to avoid the Mancunian way with all these bloody roadworks. That's right. I just hope he's in. Unfortunately, the phone number's now disconnected. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise. There's other a few people after him, didn't we? Where, where are you going today? We're yes. just now going out to visit somebody that we know as Frank, whom has historically 
provided information to other officers, not ourselves. Frank's obviously very au fait with the activities of this group, but I tend to detect there's an element of um, concern about speaking. I think he's frightened. I think he's frightened. Anybody that's worth his salt in this kind of investigative role would thoroughly check out information that he receives from any source. What we find is that we'll get a degree of information off an informant, and even he will only be repeating what he's heard. I think a drive past might help first, right. and then we'll park up, Martin, okay. some, some distance away. I think we'll go for a walk. Trim's horrible, isn't it? Yes, I've seen that colour trim. It's yeah. um, deck chair trim. <laughs> Got standard, that, is it? Oh, deck chair seats. <laughs> well, we went to this beach in Blackpool. <laughs> and woman, this deck chair, chair was so there. nice, we decided to trim out the car. It's the wrong way up. It was lovely. <laughs> so every time we sit yeah. in this car now, <laughs> it reminds us of Blackpool Beach. He's <laughs> down seat, man. Versatile. You wait till it gets. Can you see the back as well as the front? We've got a torch. The trawl of cars through the vehicle examiner's surgery goes on. Nearly half a million are stolen in England and Wales every year. 41,000 each month. 2796. 323, this as well. Yeah. So we're, look, we're looking at an A reg here, I think. I don't think it's a Y. I think we're looking at an A because it's far too late. Dates are too late. It's, it's going to be an A reg. And it's on the W. Yeah. Right. It's a bit of some value, that. Just been told that due to the attentions of ourselves and the uniformed officers in this area over the last week or so, Everybody is, as he described, on pins. Hence the reason for his reticence about actually speaking to us in any way where he could be identified. He himself had a shotgun put to his head six days ago, being warned not to say anything to the police. Because Mr Big is apparently 60-plus, isn't he? Yeah, the guy that's allegedly at the, the top of the pyramid in terms of moving these vehicles has a market both in New Zealand and Fiji, you just mentioned, didn't it? Well, he said Fiji en route to New Zealand, yeah. 64 years old. And has been doing it for some years and never been touched. I've also just found out that the BMW that we recovered on Friday is very likely to have been on its way to New Zealand in the very near future. It's crunch time for another owner. Right, Mr. Walton. Walton. The vehicle's a stolen vehicle. It's been reported stolen from the G Division of this force. Would you like to tell me just where and when you got the vehicle? You got it off me yesterday. Off him yesterday. I got it off my brother in law. When was that? Uh, two days back. Right. And he turned got it off his brother in law. Yeah. How long ago does it go back through the family? Uh... I won it, I say, for two days. He's on it for, say, a fortnight. Mm. And then the brother-in-law had it up his drive for, like, about four months. Mm. He's been doing work for the MOT. Do you know as to where he got it from? I've no idea. It's probably somebody out of the family, I believe. So it could have been in the family for some considerable time and possibly just after the theft. Mm. So somebody's stolen it, changed its identity and flogged it to yeah. a member of your family. Mm. Is, all, is all the stuff... This engine belonged to this car? This engine belongs to this car, <coughs> yeah. yeah. What about the plates, because...? It's actually an A-registered vehicle. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because them plates come off right off car, didn't they? Mm. I mean, the police told me that you say that. They used, that's why you wanted me here this morning. Yeah. yeah. And he said um, the plates were off a, a car that was allegedly written off by the insurance. Yeah. So we'll serve some forms on you, and then we'll... Um, we'll allow you to take the vehicle away. OK. So we can get home. <laughs> yeah, so we can get home, yeah. All right. All right, thanks a lot. It's good to have not paid out for it yet.
Far removed from the world of cheap escorts, Dave McAdam and Martin Waitman have worked out how luxury cars are quietly slipped out of the country. Yesterday afternoon, we had a, a breakthrough from a neighbouring force, the Cheshire Constabulary, where they had actually recovered a vehicle from Manchester Airport. And through their inquiries, have identified that that was earmarked again to go on its way to New Zealand. Um, the way, the logistics of how the vehicle is going to get there, I'm not too sure about. Martin has made some inquiries into the background of that. It would appear that the, uh, the technique they're using is there's a freight forwarding company in New Zealand who receive a fax message from a man purporting to be called Mr Magnus uh, from Australia. And in response to that fax message, New Zealand then contact uh, a company and authorising them to collect a specific vehicle from a venue, so a long stay car park like Manchester Ringway car park. Um, this company then collects the vehicle and it's shipped out to, through Tilbury to New Zealand. Our informant has said that he's been uh, doing this for many years without being touched. Each vehicle is at least 15, 16 grand. And this is organised activity dealing with a lot of money. Mrs. Harrison has had her Austin Metro for three months. She's just passed her test and bought the car at an auction for £3,250. She works four nights a week in a nursing home and needs the car to get to work and back. Did you buy, when you bought the vehicle, were you told it was in an accident? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. It's my car. Oh, it's your car, right? It's my car. So you were aware that it was in an accident? Yes. Well, that's purely why it's been brought in, basically. Right. Every vehicle that's been involved in an accident yeah. has uh, a total loss, basically. Potentially yeah. a, to a total loss to the insurance company. It gets that's notified right, yeah. to the insurance, to, to the DVLA. Um, and when you re the vehicle's relicensed, I, you've gone into the post office and got a, a license yeah. for it. Um, they then make it aware to us, they send us a report. So yeah. as a result of that, that's why you've been phoned up and asked to bring it in. Yeah. Uh, just basically to give it the once over, make sure it's, it's right. Right. Okay, okay that's all it fine, is. Yeah. So you care to take a, a seat in the reception? Yeah, sure. We'll be with you in about ten minutes. All right. All right. Where is it? It's just across the, the way there, there's some seats in the reception. There's no doubt at some time or other that Jay 285 PVV has been involved in an accident. Yeah. But unfortunately, the vehicle we've got in front of us is not J285. Now, that's what the owner thinks they've bought. Now, in all probability, if they've been told that the vehicle was accident damaged and repaired, they're going to have paid possibly less than the market value of the car in the belief that they're buying an accident damaged repaired vehicle. But what they don't know is that they've not bought J285. They've bought a stolen vehicle. We've found a match for it on the computer. Everything relates. Chassis number, engine number. That's been used in crime. It's a good result for us, but you feel sorry for the people who were stuck in this situation. Because basically they'll have lost a lot of money. And a lot of the time it's people who have, uh, you know, it's the retirement money and such like. They've got no hope of ever getting it back. Uh, it totally destroy you. I mean, it would with me if it was my car. You know, it sets you back years with all that saving and what have you. And the other ironical thing is if they've got it on finance, they still have to keep paying the finance and they haven't got a car. I mean, it might be a few months before the car situation sorted out, they, they'll be left with it, but at the end of the day, they'll always, it'll always be taken off them. Basically, we've examined the vehicle thoroughly yeah. and uh, we've found that the vehicle is an outstanding stolen vehicle. It's stolen yeah. vehicle? Um, it's actually a K registered, not a J. Oh, Jesus, yeah. don't tell me that. We've got the chassis number back and the engine number, so there's no doubt about it in our minds mm. that the vehicle is a stolen one. You need to explain to the lady as well the legalities of the situation with the insurance because the, the car does not belong to you. 
it, 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 to me. Yeah, it will be taken off you by the insurance company at the end of the day, once the ownership is established and proved. Yeah. Uh, but we'll make arrangements for the insurance company. We'll speak to you at some time in the near future. But yeah. the vehicle uh, isn't yours. Although we let you have use of it under the restrictions that the officers told you. Okay. Yeah. So well, what? Do, how do I stand then? Well. I mean, I paid for that car. You've uh, you've lost it. Uh, you've lost the money that you paid for it. I don't believe this. And uh, I just don't believe it. You see, the situation is, if you can get back to the person from whom you bought the car, then you can take legal proceedings against him to claim your money back. But to, in relation to this vehicle. It can never be your property. So you'll lose the money and the car. So they can just come and take it off me? Yes. Okay. Just explain why there's no vent plate. The chassis number's ground yeah. now. Would you just like to All the show you what's happening? The, the basic sample details I should check, really. <coughs> That's where the, the chassis number should be on the metro. You can see there's been a plate well within there. There's a, there's, a, there's a number stamped, there, is, oh, there was a number stamped in there that related to the K-registered car. Oh, really? Now, because yeah. they've taken those K-registered plates off, they have to take that off as well. So what they've done is they've cut it out, and that's body filler, that. they've filled it over with body filler. Oh, really? So that's how they've hidden that. That number should also be on a silver plate, a VIN plate, which should be under the bonnet there. Yeah. Again, that's just been taken off. There, the holes so where it was no fastened. So there's no numbers on it at all. No, they've all been taken off because they all relate to the K-registered car. So all the numbers have been oh, taken right, off. Yeah. So, the point is, you, see, you didn't get the registration document when you bought the car, so you can't. So you couldn't that. check those no, numbers. No, well, he turned around and says to me that you you just send off to Swansea for it, and so I did. Well, that's that's how you've been conned. If you'd have had that document and you'd have known. That those numbers should be on that plate and they should be stamped in there. You could have checked that and immediately. But I've got a document here. No, but you sent off for that. That relates not yeah. to the car. That relates to the J registered one now. You keep forgetting, you see, that you've got a stolen car and it's on a false number. Do you realise this? Well, it's really down the new slam panel put on, didn't it? Because all the front end was. They said all that side was repaired, didn't it? Oh, shit. No, I've just saved up. But I'm on up four nights a week, you know. I'm lost with that, right? Fresh in the Merseyside area this morning, yeah. nice and um, misty. And... Where we're going is it's around the corner. Is it? How far down is it? 200 yards. Uh, have we got any facilities for um, the road? Yeah, come in. Oh, smash it. At Liverpool docks, 250 second hand larders are about to be shipped to Russia. There's a rumour that some are stolen and that there are people in Russia who will pay good money to own one. The vehicle squad have been called in. Awesome. Speak to Russian, don't you? Do you speak Russian? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, <laughs> hey, you can't fight that, you can't fight that. <laughs> I'll go and get some tea bags, are you? Well, we need some, yeah. <laughs> You've got a range roller. How much of a range roller have you bought? Oh, it's a range. Just an ex Lancashire man to have cups in his locker, right? Eh? <laughs> yes, you are aware the DCI is making a brew. The DCI is making sure he gets a cup. <laughs> That's what the DCI is doing. <laughs> no, 
Back home, the larders are in great demand and their value more than doubles. I mean, what's happening now, I believe, people are getting stopped on the streets here and, and you know, by Russian nationals saying, do you want to sell your larder? Because one of our policemen on the gate was approached. Yeah, um, does he want to sell his larder? Have you sold it? No, we couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the going right now for that? Uh, well, his was, it was H registered and they offered him seven or eight hundred pounds. Bringing the cars in. Students, <laughs> and anyone I believe the export models have the engine in. <laughs> <laughs> the case of the disappearing larders is believed to be a scam organized by enterprising students doing Russian studies. Any suspect vehicles at all, make sure that Kembell gets all the details. OK, we're going to have a look at it and then we'll work out where we're going to start. OK? Just get me gloves and me mask. Larder. Halt, larder. We have outstanding to date, 114 ladders stolen. We have equally the same number of Audis and the same number of BMWs. But when you look at the range of the quality of the vehicle and the cost of the vehicle, we've got very, very high class vehicles dropping right down to rock bottom ladders. Don't believe it. Charlie, 749, Whiskey Mike Sierra. That doesn't agree with that at all with, uh, with what we've put in. It's got the right engine in, the wrong chassis number. All the vehicles going to Russia are all booked in officially with the various shipping agencies and the shipping lines. So from our point of view, we've got to take that face value, that there's nothing wrong with it, that, that it's the same as a genuine customer taking a container anywhere in the world. What sort of cash do they pay for, for uh, shipping? Um, well, the, um, it, these particular vehicles have been paid cash on the other side, so that, that, that all they're leaving is the keys as a deposit. The shipping line have got the, the car. Uh, to be paid for on the other side. Well, what's the situation with the, the nighttime traffic in relation to the ladders and uh, outside the dock gates? Uh, how does that work? Um, well, I mean, the ladders that are being sold outside will be sold to crew. Well, it's, it's a different situation there, whereas they don't go in the hold of the ship. The crew put them on the deck themselves. There's no documentation such for that because when it reaches Russia, it's put on the quayside and the crewman will drive it out as his own property. What sort of cash are they fetching over there? I believe it's, it's up to £1,500. That you'd be lucky to get £100 in the auctions here. In Morecambe, the year-long pursuit of Mr Big is coming to a climax. Good afternoon, everybody. This is a joint operation between the regional crime squad and the stolen vehicle squad from the Greater Manchester Police. The information is that uh, Hudson himself is involved in the exportation of stolen motor vehicles from England to New Zealand. This particular consignment consists of five vehicles. Dave McAdam and his partner Martin have finally pieced together the elaborate scheme enabling Mr Hudson to ship stolen cars abroad. Five stolen vehicles, including a BMW and a Mercedes, are due to dock in New Zealand. It's quite a simple action tonight. It's been accelerated by the fact that these vehicles are anticipated in arriving in Auckland very, very shortly. Consequently, our hands have been forced a little bit, but that's why we're moving now, just to explain the background a little bit to you. That's it, thanks. OK, thanks very much, gents. Thank you. We don't need to leave here till about... Um... Is it? Yeah. yeah. So if we meet back in here in an hour's time, will that suit you? That'll suit fine. Can we go and get something to eat then? Yeah, now? next floor up. <laughs> He's only just eaten this guy about I half an hour eaten. ago. Three quarters. Had a Twix. Yeah. Something on the phone. The no. massive markets for vehicles abroad, with immense economic benefit for those that are able to administer it. And if we can make a, a dent in that, it should have far more effect. We can regularly deal with and apprehend car thieves on a local level, but I, I sometimes wonder about how effective that is in terms of the overall problem. And the people at the top are the ones that we need to have a go at if we can.
That's him. So number six, let's go. It's 9 p.m. Mr. Hudson's about to get an unexpected knock on his front door. Could you speak to you, please? The police officers, we need to have a chat with you. Thanks. Mr. Hudson? Yeah. Warren's here to search your premises. The police don't expect any trouble but they've come mob-handed, just in case. If I don't fuck with drugs, if that's what you're thinking... You mentioned it. drugs? I'm arresting you, Mr Hudson, on suspicion of handling stolen motor vehicles. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, right. but what you say will be taken down and maybe given evidence. Do you understand that? Mm. What dealings have you had with vehicles recently? Well, I think I'd better get the right to a solicitor before I can say anything on that. Well, that's entirely up to yeah, you, but yeah. you're not getting the advice of a solicitor till you get to a police station. All right. We both know what we're talking about. Let me reassure you. I feel that, it, uh, that I should talk to a solicitor. Right, Fine. What, what we're going to do now, yeah. if you come through to this room here, and we're going to search your premises. After two hours of searching and questioning, they're getting ready to leave. We've identified a number of phone numbers and addresses which correspond with what the New Zealand police have got. Have you got any clues as to vehicle identity or anything in there? No. No. So there's nothing to relate him to any of the cars that are going to New Zealand or whatever? There's only one picture, one photograph I've found of one vehicle that he sent legitimately through some channels in January this year. And he's told us about that. And within the conversation about that, he's told us that they're worth about three times more in New Zealand. So there's, there's all sorts of elements we can pursue. Looks as though we're going to have to work hard, though. He won't speak to us without a solicitor. Yeah, come down this way. Come down this way. Yeah. If they're going to make the case against Mr Hudson stick, they need hard evidence now that he's involved. Yeah, jump in there. Okay. In a simultaneous operation in Auckland, New Zealand, local police have picked up the man collecting the vehicles shipped over by Mr Hudson. The one thing that'll clinch the case is if this man names Hudson as his supplier. As Hudson goes off to spend the night in a police cell, Dave and Martin head back to their office to phone the New Zealand police. 2 a.m. in Manchester, midday in New Zealand. Good afternoon, this is uh, Greater Manchester in England here. Yes, Detective Sergeant Ross Arden I need to speak to, please. Thank you. <laughs> right, right. We've, just, we've just got back ourselves from Morecambe now. Uh, uh, just to put you in the picture at our end, um, Hud Hudson has been arrested. How have you got on? Right. Did he give any, any, any indication to you at all that the man who he dealt with with regard to these cars was called Hudson? Yes. Yeah. We think that's what's going to appear on his prepared statement. The sooner we can get a faxed copy of that, uh, of that statement... Oh. Qu quoting the vehicles and, and obviously the name Hudson and the registration numbers, then we've got our evidence and we can charge him then. Right, smashing that, Ross, that'd be absolutely terrific. Thanks very much, Ross. Turn on out. He has registration documents for the vehicles that are due to arrive. Go on, tell me some more. And uh, he has used the name Hudson as being the person from whom and he's taking delivery of the cars. Yes. Excellent. Right. So that, uh, that is very likely what's going to be in this prepared statement. Yeah. Yeah. Which they're going to fax a copy to us as soon as possible. So he, Ross, is going to contact the solicitor um, with whose assistance the prepared statement will obviously be made. He's going to contact the solicitor now. Uh, I think he was talking in terms of half past two, three o'clock before he got the statement. So there's every chance that a 
fax copy of that could be here when we come in in the morning. By the time we come in tomorrow morning, there could be a fax copy of that statement. Excellent. I feel good now. I feel happier. What a claim. Well done, Walter. Share that between you. Tilbury docks two months later. Dave McAdam has managed to get the stolen cars shipped back home. This is the first consignment of a number of vehicles that we've been pursuing that have come back from New Zealand. I'm uh, like everybody else here, I've got my fingers crossed. I can't wait to see these vehicles. They're like the Holy Grail for me now. And I won't be leaving until I see them, but uh, have a degree of confidence and quite a degree of satisfaction of promoting out. Hudson used containers to ship the cars to New Zealand. These only cost about £160 to rent, plus a shipping fee. Their contents are rarely checked. Down under, the cars are worth twice as much as they are here. Where's John? Is that yours, John? That's my car. Yes! Last time I saw that, it was going down Altingham Road at about 100 miles an hour, with blue smoke coming out of the back of it. So you pleased, are you? Oh, I'm delighted. I'm pleased we've done yes. it for you. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. It's my right. car. Is that coming out, is it? Yes. Right. I was uh, filling it up with petrol, and uh, as I turned to go away and pay, a gentleman bumped into me, and as I turned round, he was getting into my car, and he disappeared off down the forecourt and off towards uh, the motorway. Three or four weeks later, uh, I had a phone call from my insurance company to say that uh, because the keys were in the car, they wouldn't uh, meet the insurance claim. So I thought I was going to say bye-bye to about £25,000. As it turned out, two hours later, the police phoned me and said, uh, we found your car, but there's a little problem. It's on the way to New Zealand. valuable vehicle like they're worth about 28 when they knew them and it's not very old that. Does that look like the vehicle that you knew? It's 220 yeah but uh, have they changed the plates on it? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. That's the one you hopefully well that's the one you're taking back anyway Maud. Thanks a lot. <laughs> right lads can you release it? Yes. Look at the confusion the trauma of the consternation it's caused and the the extent of the uh, arrangements that we had to make and the cooperation that we have to look for and hopefully receive to get these cars back. All caused by one man's activities in administering and coordinating it. It should be dealt with very firmly, but it remains to be seen. The fact that we've done a good job and we've recovered property in the kind of state which looks quite good, it might actually lessen the effect of the court proceedings against the prisoner. It shouldn't do, and I hope it doesn't, but no doubt we've saved him some grief by recovering the quality of vehicles in the state that we have. In New Zealand, this consignment would have fetched £150,000. Phil Hudson is serving four years for conspiracy to handle stolen cars. His sentence was reduced on a plea of ill health. <laughs> 